United Church of Christ for Lauderdale this August 14th, 2016 for a very special day, for a very special celebration, for a very wonderful and special man, our Reverend Emeritus Dr. Garth R. Thompson. My name is Andrew Lockton, and I love more than anything being a part of the United Church of Christ for Lauderdale, where I currently serve on your board of directors as your treasurer. It is a pleasure to say that we are doing very well financially. We continue to thank each and any one of you for your support and your many levels of service. Welcome today to our church home. And please know that whoever you are in your life's journey, and wherever you are in your personal life's journey, you are truly welcome here where God is still speaking. After worship, please spell out one of our announcements. Please pick up one of our announcement sheets, which gives details of our upcoming events and services taking place here at the church. Today, we are recognizing the very extensive ministry of the church's pastor emeritus, the Reverend Dr. Garth R. Thompson. We also today welcome the many guests who have served alongside Pastor Barth, who will be participating in today's service. We have a wonderful soloist, Dale Kitchell, who sang in our choir at the 98th Community Church for many years. He is with us. We also have one of our former friends, who actually was one of our congregants, who came to the 98th Community Church in the fall of 2000. He then felt the calling and became a pastor. He currently pastors his own church successfully on the west coast of Florida in Bradenton. Reverend Dr. Bob Sikta and his lovely wife Pia have drove from the west coast to the east coast to join us today to honor Dr. Thompson. In addition, one that's very special to my heart, Garth's former administrative assistant, Cynthia Lee, now who also felt the calling after serving under Garth for 30 plus years, and she also will be delivering the message today. We also would like to welcome Ms. Charlene Tompkins. Let us meet today very thankful people, God's people. Let us open our hearts to the divine worship around us and now. Take a deep breath. And remember today that we truly are in our God's presence. Let us worship and praise the Holy One.
joined me in the call to worship found in your sanctuary bulletins. Come, listen to the one. Come and see the one. Come, bring thanksgiving, the sacrifice that honors the one.
good people here in the United Church of Christ in Fort Lauderdale. You are part of the legacy. You will be able to go on because of what Garth Thompson has given you. He called himself a good-for-nothing pastor because he came here and worked for free. <laughs> well, everywhere he's gone, he's touched lives like that. But I want you to know, Garth, how much Pia and I love you and how deeply grateful we are. For the day you sent me an email when I was wondering whether someone should go in my place to an event that I couldn't attend. And you said, I think Pia is an excellent idea. She brings a beautiful presence wherever she goes. That is the woman you performed the wedding vows for, the woman I married, and the reason I'm able to stand here today. With all my heart, God, with all our hearts, thank you in the name of all that is holy, including the United Church of Christ. by passing. Let us be people who share in our blessings with each other. The peace of the Lord be with you.
esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. The next reading will be 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. Let the elders who rule well be considered of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. This is the word of God for the people of God. Today, we come to celebrate one who, in my opinion, is the greatest pastor that I've ever met. He's not only a pastor, he's a friend. He's a confidant. He's everything you need him to be when you need him. He's always there. A few months ago, I came across this quote in Forbes Magazine by Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr is the coach for the Golden Warriors. I, you know, happen to be a basketball fan, so I chose one of his quotes because it was on leadership. And he said this, and it, it just struck me as, as something profound. He said, one of the places you can show your greatest weakness is in how you speak about a person who held the job before you. Mm. Always remember that. And my grandmother used to have this saying, and she would say, if you have nothing good to say about anybody, Close your mouth. Just don't say anything at all. It's better to be quiet. For the past few years, I have immersed myself in understanding what it's like to be a good leader, a great leader. And of course, I didn't have a very hard time coming to this realization because I had such a perfect example. 29 years ago, I walked through the doors of Miami Beach Community Church seeking a job. I was new here. And uh, the job I was working with, they shut down. Saw this ad in the paper, church needed a church secretary. I go and I call Reverend Garth, he answered the phone. He said, come on in, I want to interview you. Needless to say, we ended up talking about everything else but the position. <laughs> so then he says to me, can you sing? I said, yeah, I'll sing a little bit. And he got on the piano and began to play Amazing Grace. And I sat in Amazing Grace, and he looked up at me and he said, you're hired. We went to stop. I said, I said, that's it? He said, you got the job. He said, I interviewed several people for this position, and none of them just didn't work out. It just didn't fit. He said, with you, I know you're the one. Anyway, needless to say, I began working for the church and working under his leadership for 24 years, mind you. And he said something great to me. He looked at me and he says, okay, kid, you're on your own. I'm going to the vacation. I said, you're going where? So he hands me this huge ring of keys for the entire building and says, I want you to hold it down while I'm gone. Of course, there was an associate minister. Thank God. I looked at him. I said, you trust me with the keys to this building? He said, I trust you. You're going to be around a long time. Of course, he was right. We encounter people in our lives who have made a great influence in our lives, but it's rare that we encounter one who is bright, gifted, kind, witty, loving, and concerned about all humanity. I mean everyone. And this man, the Reverend Dr. Garth R. Thompson, he fits the mold. Before I tell you about my friend and my mentor, I want to get a little bit into the scripture lesson today. The Apostle Paul begins writing this epistle, and he's writing to young Timothy, and I'm picturing myself as being young Timothy. From his mentor, he tells Timothy, you get, you're get ready this church, the Ephesians church, and he says, now I need you to be in charge over the people. Now, of course, like any other church, there were problems going on in the church. We had pastors who, who wanted to sincerely preach the word, while there were others who were false pastors. There were people lobbying for positions in the church, and said, don't act like y'all know because it happens in every church. There's always, I always said, there's always one. So while all this is going on, young Timothy becomes disturbed. So the apostle Paul begins to encourage him and tells him, this is what you have to do. You have to get people together. Your focus should be 
leaning on God and you worship and, and get the church officials together and, and you all become a family and you work together as one because that's truly what God wants us to do. God has taught us through his word that we ought to love one another. There is no one bigger or greater than God. God is God and he's God all by himself. It is essential that the church be restored. The confidence lies with the leadership. I'm grateful to God because God sent a great leader to Miami Beach Community Church and to this wonderful church, which I thank Pastor, Pastor Garth for everything that he has done with both churches and also for choosing and help steering Pastor Patrick because the first time I met him, which is today, I see his sincerity and that he truly loves God. And he's, his spirit is, is, we're already connected in the spirit. So, you know, I think about the great things that Reverend Garth has done throughout the ministry. And when I look at, you know, Paul and I look at Timothy, I see myself, I see Bob. I see the, the things that he's instilled in us. He was our example. It took me a long time to decide to go to seminary. I fought with Paul and he kept saying, you got to go. You got to go. You go. Just do it. And I'm glad I did. I'm in Chicago Theological Seminary. I'm loving it. And I owe a lot of that to him because he encouraged me to be about God's business. I look at the church and the state of the church and where we are. And oftentimes we come to church and we lead out the same way we need to enter it. It's important that we, while we're here, that we listen to God's spirit, that we are rooted in and grounded in the word. Because there are times in our lives, it will happen, it will happen with all of us, where we're going to need God's guidance, where we're going to need to hear a word from God. And I'm thankful for Reverend Garth because he always instilled that in each of us. But the church will continue to exist. It must, and I mean it must, Support its leaders. You have to support the man or woman that God has placed as a shepherd of the church. Because it's important, because they're hearing from God and they're going to direct the church. They bring their whole selves to any task. As Reverend Garth did, he supported inclusion, not exclusion. He fought for equal rights. He stood up for rights when no one else in the community of Miami Beach would do so. And for that, we should be commended. There were times when we've had families come in with, that were grieving and were going through hard times. He would stop whatever he was doing to speak to that issue. There were times when I needed him because I had a gentleman come into the church one day and he was a bit deranged. I don't know how he got this building, but I remember trying to calm him down and suddenly I calmed down and I just down with him guards and I said, hello. He said, you need me? I said, yes, right away. And I mean, they don't call the pastor pastor for nothing. He flew down the stairs. I don't know how he got down those stairs so fast. And I just sat back and I watched him. He calmly went over to the gentleman. And the, and the man was really, really causing some problems. And he got him to sit down. He got ready to minister to the guy. He could feel the spirit. He just calmed him down. Eventually, the gentleman got up and he left. He walked out of the building. And I looked at him and I said, wow, that was amazing. I still gifted. You are very gifted. And he said, no, it's, it's just God. And if you continue to live for God, he'll show you what to do. There was a time my co-worker and I were talking. And we were talking about Reverend Garth. And when he said to me, he said, you know, for many years, I didn't trust in the preacher. I didn't trust in anything they had to say. And I said, what was that? He said, because I've been hurt by priests and pastors in Columbia. But when I came here and I, I met Reverend Garth, I knew there was something different. So I asked the question. I said, Luis, what is it about Reverend Garth that was different? He said, his eyes. He said, look into his eyes and you can see that he's a true person of God. And I said, that is beautiful because the scripture teaches us that the eyes are the windows of the soul. And when you look into his eyes, you can see his love for God, his love for humankind. Your soul, our soul, is the essence of our being. Our spirit is what connects us to God, therefore allowing us to commune with him and each other. When I was asked the question about double honor, what does that mean? I was at Reverend home about a month ago, and I said, you know they're having another celebration for you. He says, I don't know why they're doing that. It must have been ready to die. I said, no, they don't think that. Of course, there is his wit and his sense of humor. And I said, why would you say that? I still know that the scripture tells us that you, as a pastor, are worthy. 
because of your greatness and your goodness and what you have done, not only in our lives, but in the lives of so many others. Because you carried yourself in ministry as a leader, you have sown good seeds to others. So therefore, we are sowing back into your lives. You have given so much kindness. You've taken time out to counsel with people, to, to pray with people, to pastor with folk. Jesus lived by the knowledge of love, then love, and he reveals that to all of us in a number of ways. One of the reasons he does this is the need for empathy and gentleness, which we all need to have. And I've been privileged over the last 29 years to see that gentleness in this gentle man, caring for those who are less fortunate, being there for those who are hurting, standing up for the rights of others when they couldn't fight for themselves. Oftentimes, taking a back seat so that someone else would shine. And that's what he does well. Even when there have been times people have damaged or tried to hurt him and his character, he would always say to us, turn the other cheek. And I would always ask him, why? Why do you do that? What, what, is, what is that? He said, because I'm not worried. God will protect me. And he did. And I watched him time, time again walk away from situations and said, it's not worth it. I trust God that much that he's going to take care of me. And he has. As a pastor, you study to show yourself approved. You equip yourself by going to seminary. And you study walking hard. You allow no trial or tribulation to get the best of you. Even today, you've made your way here to the house of the Lord. You are determined in everything that you do. And that no matter what comes your way, you always say to us, it's going to be okay. I'm going to keep going. And he, and he has that spirit about him. To be a servant leader, sometimes we need to keep in mind that we are just that. We are servants and leaders second. We must learn to model Christ-like servanthood in every situation. God has chosen us. And he's called us. Therefore, he's equipped us. The man we are honoring today exemplifies so many wonderful qualities. He's in best time and energy, commitment, empowering, and engaging others. He integrates the whole and truly understands when people trust him that they will remain loyal and dedicated to him. And that's with all of us. Whenever a leader can trust us, they know that we have their backs. So today, we honor our dear Reverend Gard our friend, our brother, for all that you've given, for every sacrifice you have made, for passing the mantle to not only me, but to Bob, and in not allowing us to fulfill our God-given destiny. It's because of your leadership, it's because of your grace, that all of us have been made better, grown stronger, and even wiser. So it's with gratitude and appreciation we say thank you Thank you for being a wonderful pastor, mentor, confidant, counselor, and for the many wonderful meals you cook in your home. Thank you. I will close with this quote from Maya Angelou, and she says, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. Thank you for letting us feel God's love through you. For you are the wind beneath our wings. Woo! That is it.
when we were talking about going out of business. And Tom Isabel was sitting there with us. You were sitting in front of us. And you said to me, you said, Fred, you know, I'm retired. But I really believe that God is still calling me to do something, and I don't know what it is. And then we had two ministry leaders up here, and they said, we have to have an interim pastor. We couldn't afford an interim pastor. So Gar said, well, if I get called, I'll be your pastor. So we said, we want to call Gar Thompson as our pastor. And they said, you can't do that. I said, we're Thomas. We can do anything we want. <laughs>
member of Church of the Open Door in Miami, and I spend most of my time helping to revitalize First Church of North Miami. But I'm here today to represent the Samaritan Counseling Centers of South Florida. Because we love and admire you so very much. I'm going to ask all of the board members and friends of the Samaritan Counseling Centers to please stand. And I want you to know that all of them send their love, regard, appreciation for GARP at this time. Our board members consist of Phil Carroll, Reverend Misty Johnson Arts, Reverend Jill Lindsay Ogden, Amber Gosso Seidel, Marilyn Hicks, Andrew Ogden, Charlotte Smiley, and our very own that we hold in high esteem and in emeritus position is Reverend Garth Thompson. What I'd like to say to you this morning is that I feel that Garth is so special that I dressed up this morning and put on these shoes that hurt my feet. <laughs> On another note, the Board of Directors started not robbery to commission a fine artist that does public works to allow us to use his artwork to share our appreciation with you and our love that we have for God. My little cheap advertisement is when we have people that do things for us, um, on the shoestring budget that we have. I just want to share with you, this artist's name is Gary Moore. And if he asks you, I'd like you to repeat back to me, the name of the artist who lent us his imagery is who? Gary Moore. Now we don't have to paint. <laughs> but I want to share with you that our certificate of appreciation that we'd like to present to guard them. I want my board members and my friends, please stand. Please stand. You can stand too. Our certificate of appreciation that is presented on this fine art is to Reverend Dr. Garth Thompson on Sunday, the 14th day of August 2016. The Reverend Dr. Garth Thompson led the Miami Beach Community Church as one of the founding churches for the counseling ministry of South Florida. This was at a time when mental health was seldom mentioned. He helped many people with their mental health issues operate a spiritual sensitivity through this organization. This was in 1982. In 2013, on the board of directors which merged with the Samaritan Centers of South Florida to become the Samaritan Counseling Centers of today. We thank you for your superior contributions to the Samaritan Counseling Centers as you have always been a person to meet people where they are and always let them know that they are one. I'd like to present this to you at this time.
Reverend Gray and myself traveled up to the UCC in Lake Worth to present a workshop on stewardship. And we said we're not afraid to talk about it. We serve a loving, giving God, one that has been so gracious in giving to us every moment of every day. And we told them that giving is like a fruit salad, didn't we? It really is. Giving is just like a fruit cocktail. Remember that that used to come in the can with the red cherry? It's a fruit salad. And it makes me think of the fruit of the Spirit that we read in Galatians. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness. Isn't it interesting that this passage comes to mind the same week we recognize you, Dr. Garth? That's been my experience with you. And that's why this church is growing. Because you live that. It's been my experience with you. I feel nothing with you except for joy, peace, patience, your kindness, faithfulness, your gentleness especially. And to hear Cynthia tell the stories about when things would be chaotic, now I've learned this, you also practice self-control. I'm a wonderful. But the greatest of these fruits of the Spirit is love. I have felt that from you here from day one. And I do today, as we all do. So we ask you to be kind and gentle with yourself, with your love of God, and be generous because this church is just such many, many, many powerful ministries. People find their touch through what you do and how you do it. Garth, I want to take a moment and say thank you for your service to the United Church of Christ, Fort Lauderdale. We both came here about the same time. You retired from Miami Beach, and I had friends who were attending the church who invited me down from Boca Raton. I think we both knew that God called us for a reason, to lead us to this great church with a rich history, which had been struggling for a few years. Seems like it was all in one moment that I became president moderator of the board, and one of my first motions was to call as our designated pastor, the Reverend Dr. Garth R. Thompson. Your wisdom, experience, and spiritual guidance to the board allowed the team to turn United Church of Christ Fort Lauderdale in three years back to being a stronger church for the Fort Lauderdale community. I know God has blessed you for your many years of service, and in turn, you have blessed us, the members of the United Church of Christ Fort Lauderdale. We are on the right track because you were faithful to the pulpit always teaching God's love for all people. You, for sure, are a special saint in my eyes, and in closing, someone who thinks just as highly of you as I do. Brother Garth, <clears throat> this is for you. Thumbs up. Praise the Lord. Greetings to the Fort Lauderdale United Church of Christ, especially on this celebration uh, honoring Garth and the tremendous work he has done in your church and in other churches before this. Garth and I go back 41 years when he reached out to me uh, as a new start pastor uh, in Boynton Beach, Florida. I'm standing in front of this bridge, which Robin and I own together because it, for me, is one of the symbols of our relationship. You see, I see Garth as a person who has always built bridges. He builds bridges and he maintains them. He built a bridge for me coming into Florida when the Florida Conference had kind of bungled the start of my church. And as a result, I wasn't welcome in the Palm Beach County Ministerial Association. But Miami-Dade, through Garth's work, welcomed me there, and eventually the whole of Florida Conference did as well. But that's the kind of bridge building and bridge maintenance that I uh, would point out that he's so capable of. 
One of my favorite quotes, and I know Garth has used it in his bulletins many times, comes from Philip Brooks. It says, great preaching is really a simple truth done by someone who believes it to people he knows and loves. The key is that last part. And that's the reason why Garth has built such great bridges. It's the reason that he has done such a tremendous job as pastor of the church here in Miami Beach, Florida, and the church there in, in Fort Lauderdale, and in the many places where he's, his ministry has touched people, because he touches them out of a deep reverence and love that is born out of his faith, a people that he knows and loves. Garth, you know, I love you for all that you have done for me, being a tremendous bridge, bringing me into Florida, supporting me as I left the ministry and went off into other ventures, and continuing to be truly one of my best friends. I wish you long life.
life and love of your son Jesus. We ask that you bless these gifts we return to you. Bless them so that they are used in your name and your honor and always for your glory, O oh Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Very exciting it is to look out and see you smiling faces so I can't resist saying thank you. Thank you for being here. And a special thank you to Joe Aiken, who I think more than anybody else took care of all the details of today's event, which is only half done. We have a beautiful luncheon coming up for us right away. But I do want to express appreciation to him and to our guest speaker and to our beautiful choir. We really let it up today, gang. <laughs> Before David came in, revolutionized everything, we sang only in two parts, and we were a quarter of its many. But there's one reason that I've interrupted everything to stop and say thank you. There's someone I want to say a special thank you to, and that's our pastor, Pastor Patrick Rogers. Can you imagine coming to a new church as pastor as he did, and learning that the former pastor would be sitting in the front pew of the week? <laughs> I heard his vocabulary increased by three words. But you know, he has been so loving, so kind, so welcoming, so generous to me. I want all of you to know that I love him, and I know you do too. Let him hear your love.
hope you were touched today by God's love and grace while viewing our worship service, and we hope to see you in person one day. We at the United Church of Christ, Fort Lauderdale, are an open and affirming church that believes in equality for all. We have many ministries that reach out to the needs of those in our community, and there's always something here for everyone to be involved in. We believe that God is still speaking and that our ministry outreach can only continue its vital mission in bringing people to Christ through the support of people just like you. Please visit our website, uccftl.org, for more information about us, to submit a prayer request, or even donate to the church if you have been moved by the Spirit. You will help us in God's work in our ministry outreach. We look forward to hearing from you soon, and we hope to see you next week. May God's peace and love be with each and every one of you. And remember, God is still speaking.